Welcome back, fellow adventurers, to the Pace Center Games YouTube channel. My name is Ben Barsh. I'm your host, Gun and Dungeon Master, here for anything that happens at Pace Center HQ. So, or Pace. Okay, maybe vote in the comments. This is going to be a separate video. I just moved back to Orlando, Florida. For those who don't know, I did an internship with the Walt Disney Company, moved back to, with my parents in Michigan, and now back in Orlando, Florida, about a year and a half later. I have a little townhouse. Um, I have all the Pace Setter stock here. It's the new Pace Setter HQ. Should I call it Pace Setter HQ or the Pace Quarters? I'm leaning towards Pace Quarters, and that's what my friends told me. That's not the point of the video. Let's move on. <laughs> so if you're here, you're most likely here from Into the Unknown. First of all, thank you again for backing the project. This has been a crazy experience, um, finishing and, and producing a solo adventure, which is just so uncommon in the world of tabletop RPGs, especially... Uh, Dungeons and Dragons or alternatives like Swords and Wizardry or Basic Expert. Absolutely amazing proce process, so thank you all for being here. And I'm here to give you what exactly I promised. Updates. What is going on with the project? What's happening? First of all, sorry, this is all not really in order or tidy. I'm going to get some paintings there. Don't worry about the set for now. We're here about the content of Into the Unknown. So, where are we now? We are moving right along. We're finishing all the artwork. We're finishing off all the maps. And honestly, from that production side, we're doing really well. Um, soon the book will be sent off to the editor, uh, Editor Jeff. He's absolutely awesome. He edited Path of the Vanished. This is going to be a second book editing with us. As Pace Editor grows and as we um, have bigger projects, we add more people onto the team and make the production quality go up. So that will be off to edit soon. But in today's video, I specifically wanted to show you a little bit of how exactly this book came together or how it is coming together. Obviously, we're not done yet. So, writing a solo adventure is kind of tough. For me, the dungeon parts are very much very much easier. You go into a dungeon, if you go left, turn to, turn to section one, if you go right, turn to section two, so on and so forth until you complete the objective that you were sent out there for. You complete the quest. Roleplay encounters, though, are very, very nitpicky and different for solo adventures. And while solo adventures are and always have been much more combat-centric, right, exploration-centric, you get to see all these different cool things, the art pieces, you get to adventure where you want, roleplay is very much like off to the wayside because you're pretty much just roleplaying in your, in your head or with yourself because you, you're playing as the monsters as well, right? But I have a massive roleplay encounter in Into the Unknown. And it's actually fashioned after my hometown uh, restaurant. Uh, the one that me and my friends, uh, it's our favorite place ever. Um, it's called Charlie's Still on Main. And I talked to Charlie, the owner, and he approved us using Charlie's in the book. So I got his restaurant made up as a map. I got art pieces made up for it. It's going to look freaking awesome. <laughs> and I'm so excited for it. But I thought that'd be the best place to have a massive roleplay encounter where it's almost more like a choose-your-own-adventure book. There are wrong ways to turn, but there are right ways to turn. There's mediocre ways to turn. There's ways to turn that will help you later in this adventure path. Writing that is difficult, and it's not easy. I will... So I'm going to show you um, my, my whiteboard of knowledge <laughs> that I have used throughout this whole process to keep me sane and keep all my ideas together. Again, note, I just drove down to Orlando to move. I'm still settling. Um, I brought the whiteboard down, but a lot of stuff got smudged. So if you see a bunch of smudges, that's why. So this is what it looks like. <laughs> I don't know exactly if you can see on camera. I'm sure you can see most of it, though. I'll slide out of the way. How about that? So once you arrive, there are different branches of reality that you can jump into. You can go up to the bar. You can go up to a group of nobles. You can go up to a group of ruffians. Or you can go check out the band. From there, as you can see, just decision trees begin to spawn. And the thing that I, I want to focus on with Into the Unknown and, and how we finish is I want to have meaningful choices, right? Not, of course, not every choice is going to get you um, a, a large step closer to your end goal, but at least it should get you an inch at the very least or an inch backwards if you make the wrong decision, right? So this decision tree has helped me come up with ideas of, of how that, that, that is possible. So let, let's, for example, like, let's go down... Let's go to the band, okay? So when you walk up to the band in the book, um, they give you an option to sit with them. So you can either sit with them or turn them down. If you turn them down, you go back to a different area in the book because you, you leave that adventure path, right? Only makes sense. When you sit down, you can either 
They explain your mission, explain your why you're there. They ask you, you know, why are you here? You can either explain or not explain. From there, it gets interesting. If you don't explain it, you just kind of converse normally, go back to the bar, and then you can go to the other decision trees, right? That one gets cut off. That, that's where that one ends. But if you explain the mission to them, they'll, they'll like, maybe they noticed something. They play, they, they play here every night. They must have noticed something of this strange character that you're trying to search down in this tavern. Well, you can insight them. You can, you can see if they're telling the truth, whether or not they know something that can help you. So if that's a success or a failure, that's when you move down to the tree. And I won't give any spoilers away from there. That, 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 that's a very light spoilers um, to see what happens when, when you uh, make those decisions. So I just wanted to share with you guys a little bit of, of how this process actually came together and how it's continuing to come together. If it weren't for this whiteboard, I would my brain would be a mess. <laughs> it helps me keep everything collected. And uh, I hope that this whiteboard will one day be framed in my own personal hall of fame of, of things that helped me become a better writer. So where are we at with the project? So as of now, the delivery um, is set to be in May. Now, if you follow Path of the Vanished, you'll know that we did deliver Path of the Vanished within February. However, because of COVID, just however, COVID's messed everything up, I'm sure all of you know. We printed the books this week. Uh, well, this is the week, first week of March. So the, the books will actually be shipped at the end of March. Just getting out ahead of it into the unknown might be the same way. I We are pulling out all the stops. We did have COVID difficulties just for uh, personal privacy. I'm, I'm not going to jump into them of members of the Paysetter team of what those difficulties were. But we did have, have difficulties related to COVID-19, which we have been done everything in our power to move past and to move through. Um, at the same speed that we were moving beforehand. Uh, I, I, the PDFs will definitely be going out in May, I, at least God willing, knock on wood, very loudly. Uh, but we might have to print the books in May, which might mean that they're delivered in June. Does that make sense? Like the, the PDF, the book will still be done. It's just whether or not these COVID complications mess us up that long ahead you know we're, we're doing a lot of catch up this month to try to make sure that doesn't happen and we can print the books we can get the books to the printer at the end of april and then you know get them printed in to you guys in may but you guys might be seeing the physical books may or june slash july but again more information on that will come um and um I'll, I'll make sure that we're everyone is working double time to make sure that doesn't happen so that also means we are probably not doing any more play testing of the book. We're pretty much just going to be working with editor Jeff and our internal play testers. Um, so I'm, apologies for those who wanted more play tests, but it, it just really not fitting into our production schedule right now. Um, but in the future, when we do more books, especially more solo adventures, God willing, <laughs> you guys like this one and I get to do another one. I would love to do more play tests. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Uh, again, if you are from Into the Unknown, Thank you again for backing. If you are new here, did not back into the unknown, the project, there is a link down in the description to where you can pre-order it if you would like to. It's a backer kit link. It'll be there. You, you'll, you'll see it. Uh, subscribe to the channel because I'm going to be doing more of these updates here on this channel. Like our social medias. They're in the description. Um, like this video if you enjoyed and comment down below just anything you have. If we should if we should call this the Pace, H, Pace, quarter, Pace Setter HQ or the Pace Quarters. I'd love to know your thoughts. Thank you all so much for watching. Have an amazing day. Keep those roles and spirits high, and I'll see you next time.